I beg your pardon and sorry for the abrupt ending to that music, but I'm ready, so no point in waiting um, another two minutes before we start talking. Good morning, gentlemen, uh, Leroy, Alba Pino, Uncle John. Uncle John, you here on Discord with me. Thank you guys for uh, uh, joining me. Goedag, goeiemorgen, Leroy. Morning, Leo. Leroy, nice yeah. to see you. Somebody from the U.S. as well uh, this time of the day. Yeah, and speaking good old Afrikaans there. Um, gentlemen, I just want to finish what I was typing here. Uh, the link to Sim Toolkit Pro is in the description uh, below the video. So let me just put that in there. Ah, all right, all right, Zimbabwe. Excellent. Well, you're in a better place right now, so let's... Hey, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's good to have you on board. Yeah, let's get cracking. I uh, want to get my display capture going. All right, okay. So guys, this is going to be a slightly different kind of stream. I'm not really going to do this as a tutorial. I'm just going to let you see how I use the Sim uh, Toolkit Pro. Um, we'll get to a tutorial at some point in time in the future. There are changes coming that I would like to have in place. I've discussed it with the developer. He's an excellent guy. Dan's wonderful uh, chap. So um, once that is in, it's going to change the way I do the tutorial and also flight planning and stuff. So um, just bear with me. Um, we're just here to have fun. I hope it's something that you will find of value and that it won't be too boring and obviously you guys need to ask your questions and stuff. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, this is one of the better add-ons, if not the best add-ons, uh, the best add-on to come my way in in the recent couple of weeks. It's really, it's, it's awesome. Good morning, Bob. So, um, in a nutshell, this is an all-in-one solution for flight planning and everything. And it's, <laughs> it's just going to get better from here, guys. So, if you don't have it, get it. It's going to take a while for you to set it up. Um, like I said, I'm not here to give you that tutorial. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to actually get rid of everything. Yeah, I will bring this stuff back later again. Let's not put unnecessary stuff on the screen. Hey, good morning, Tony. <laughs> good morning, yeah, Uncle John. Um, Uncle John is um, not blood family, but he's as good as blood family, eh, Uncle John? He's just as good as my second father now, so that's where this whole story comes in. It's set with lots of love and affection. So, okay, um, Gentlemen, uh, like I said, this is just some uh, Toolkit Pro. Uh, it gives you a turnkey solution if you're into, you know, those kind of things. One-stop shop is another way of describing it. Uh, at the moment, you can see all the guys using some Toolkit Pro. They are on the map here, and you can simply go and put your mouse on one of the guys, and you can actually see. Uh, you know, the stage name, uh, flight number, where to and from, uh, and all these things, the stage of flight, that guy's in pre-flight, that guy's pre-flight, that guy's in the cruise. All right. Um, it, this program reads its information, good morning, Paul, uh, from Navigraph data. So it is, although this is a free program, you're going to, have to at least have the Navigraph data and if possible the charts as well. Uh, you'll see it's all integrated now. So um, if you guys are into this kind of thing and if you have those subscriptions, good. If not, start saving. Uh, it's, it's very worthwhile getting. So moving on to the top right hand side, it also it lists our VATSIM controllers and pilots, the Iveo ones, the Pilot Edge ones and then the SIM Toolkit Pro. Uh, it says we've got 11 Alright, so um, 
a nice nifty little feature that is on all the pages that I can recall is having uh, access to the weather so we can quickly GSS we can quickly uh, find out what our weather is doing just by inputting that little bit of information in there we're going to get to that a little bit later on one of the things that I am personally working on um, on in the background is a spreadsheet that's just put the workflow out and in order um, just to make sense of it all so it's a work in progress don't get frightened when you see it but uh, I'm busy putting in a whole bunch of things and then we've got a flow of things you know that I'm working on that I'm going to give to you guys when I'm done that's going to tell you exactly where to start what to do what not to do kind of a thing just to get the flow going uh, and make it easier for you guys to use this program good morning Martin all right so um I need to get that little flow thing up there even for myself as this is you know a very new thing to me uh, just as a matter of interest I can show you my logbook quickly one two three four I've done four flights and the half that I did on another flight I cancelled so I've, I've only done four flights with it it's brand new to me and I'm learning every day so please take whatever I say today in that light as well that if I do make a mistake Tony you can correct me please feel free to do so don't be embarrassed or think that you're going to embarrass me if I don't know what I'm talking about please tell me um, you've used it much longer than me and you obviously reintroduced me to it after Q8 pilot many many months ago so uh, in in that light uh, let's get cracking so the first thing that's going to be very important for us is uh, the winds we need to know the winds and um, for that if you go to your flight menu you've got a wind calculator it brings us to this page where we can obviously input the airport and preferred runway it then pulls the meter in for us it gives us all the information and it gives us a graphical representation telling us that we are 100% correct in suggesting runway 22 is going to be active. Uh, potato chip. Um, <laughs> that is going to be uh, UK 2000 uh, for stand state. I've given you both links. If you look in the description below the video, the scenery is listed. The, the UK 2000 payware, the TDG free one, and then I've also got the Eindhoven free one. So just have a look there. Alba Pino, it's very, very similar, but I think there are lots of uh, things in here that I've not noticed in Ivlosoft. Now also saying that I have not got the latest Ivlosoft. The difference uh, for me from the previous version of the EFB the Ivla soft one is this is um, compatible with all the flight simulators um, I'm not sure if they changed that in the latest Ivla soft I've literally not invested in it I haven't spent any time in it I don't know what it really does or doesn't do so if you pick up a difference you're welcome to mention it there but I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with that latest one so anyway, there we've got uh, the first bit of information. So uh, what I would do just for my own sanity is I would um, copy the information across into my spreadsheet, uh, make sure I've got the correct uh, information in terms of the winds. So that will be 215 I'm just making my notes. My Q&H is 1024. Uh, density altitude um, I still make use of virtual AWOS that is one of the things that um, will be coming in uh, one of the next updates density altitude will be included as the Zebo is affected by it and it is now a real thing that you can actually simulate and use properly and explain with the Zebo that's a very important little aspect to have a little um, uh, density altitude information will go a long way so 
uh, let me just fire up my virtual A was let me oh that's not necessary it's too cold we don't even care for that it's really cold we will worry about it when it's very hot or we in the very high altitude one but anyway it's coming that one's coming our temperature is 08 dew point 06 so it's very high humidity um, precipitation I don't see any there's no precipitation and visibility is basically 10 10 miles or more all right what is significant is the overcast situation and the scattered clouds so from 2,000 feet up we are going to have clouds so uh, more than likely depending on what that temperature is going to be we're going to switch on our uh, anti-ice on the engines to handle those clouds for us so that's something we pick up already just by doing proper planning um, the next thing we're going to look at is Eindhoven and I'm also guessing to one and I'm correct there just copying everything across so I have it you can obviously make a note with pen and paper but I'm just using my spreadsheet so again we've got 180 at 8 for the winds Q and H uh, 1031 temperature will be 04 uh, okay ISA deviation that's also coming in one of the next updates we're going to skip that one for now we can use my own calculator to actually work that out why don't we just do that why don't we just do that and we've got all the actual information we can do a good flight today right so I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up quickly just because I can so we'll we'll get back to the flow just now um, as you can see we've got tabs on the side here there you've got your chart so this is Navigraph integrated and then we've also got the web FMC uh, that's integrated into the program you'll see us use that a little bit later on but for now what we are looking for is we're looking for the elevation so it's 74 current temperature is going to be a 04 and that gives us the ISA deviation of 11 degrees so we can close that spreadsheet and we can just put minus 11 in there All right precipitation I don't see any uh, not sure what that is PLU, let's quickly do a Google search on that. What on earth is that? I've never seen that. <laughs> it stands for blue, whatever the hell that means. Let's have a look, see, search a little bit further. Yep, John, yeah. Uh, okay, blue means cav, okay, and believe it or not, it seems to be an Eindhoven thing, because I've just read on this Google search, <laughs> it's also linked to Eindhoven, so there's no, no issue, that just means we've got cav, okay, good morning, uh, George, alright, uh, precipitation will be zero, let's put that in, visibility, we've got 10 miles again, transition altitude, alright, the transition altitude, we're going to get a little bit later on, from this program again or we can go to the charts and we can actually quickly have a look see transition altitude is 3000 so we can quickly make our note for that as well and then there's an interesting formula um, this is another thing that I've requested Dan to put into the program for us on our airport summary page I'd like to see the transition flight level as well Alright, so I'm going to just guess for now, and I'm going to make that 4,000, which is reasonable. Uh, 
Yes, Tony, thank you for that. Yeah, the, that will be a game changer, especially when we do training, so we don't have to uh, contend with ATCs and we can just see each other and have a, a lot of fun. You know, it reminds me of the old days with JoinFS and all these other nice software. So, good morning, Alex. All right, let's hide that one. We've got most of what we need. All right, the next thing that we need is we need to check the uh, airport standard operating procedures if they have any. Um, I happen to have read through, you know, if you start reading from the top there, uh, there are no specific uh, runway prerequisites or any suggestion that the one is more likely to be used than the other so there's no runway operations at either of the airports so what we're going to do is just use the wind which means that our active runway will be two two and two one i'm just making my notes there all right so that takes care of the minimum basics that we need to actually build a flight plan all right so what i'm going to do I'm going to go to the flight planning phase and we're going to say create a flight. So we're going to say EGSS, Stansted, EH, EH, Eindhoven. All right, now I need to go and check. My flight number will be 9271, 9271. Oops. 971, the aircraft that we're going to fly will be Ryanair and 971 for, for today as well. There's no difference between the IKO and IATA. So, departure time, let's make that. Oh, what is the time, by the way? It's 1018. So, let's make that about 25 minutes from now, 1045, about. All right, departure date is there. Good morning, Joe. And then we're going to go to the advanced section. So what we're going to do is I'm going to copy from the Ryanair virtual website the actual suggested route. I'm going to paste it in there for us. And then I'm just going to read off the other side. Um, and this is just standard contingency fuel 15 minutes and 30 minutes for the IKO rule uh, for reserves. Taxi out fuel, we're going to put 10. Uh, taxi infill 10 minutes uh, departure runway we're going to put 22 and 21 because we've already determined that passengers 133 and cargo will be in thousands so that would be 2.5 all right okay zero fuel weight we'll let the program worry about that and the cruise profile will be six all right once we have done this, check this now. Oh, we just say generate plan. So it goes to some brief, it does everything for you. And there you go, there is your basic route. Um, so from here on, uh, we've got something we can put into um, uh, the charts here Navigraph already but we're going to finish it first before we do that so what we want to do obviously is we want to get the correct SID now look look at this oh, let me just zoom back out a bit every time you put your mouse on one of the SIDs it actually draws it out for you see on the map there it actually draws it out for you and if I go back to that one and I actually click, this is the, what's it, Clacton, um, one echo. I click on it, it puts it in there for me immediately. All right. Now on this side, we're going to do something similar. So we're going to look for a star that's going to be fitting for our plan. There we go, that one seems kind of nice. So, there it's added that one for us. That's awesome. Yeah. 
But we've got a slight problem. That is just too close to the runway. We still need to look at our transitions and stuff. So what we're going to do is to zoom back out a bit. Um, then we're going to have to find a proper transition. I think that was the best one, I think, from planning, if I can remember. Again, as I just move my mouse over every one of these little suggestions, it comes up and it tells us you know visually which is nice all right that's also a very nice one okay i'm going to use that one all right so it's brought up a bit of a mess we'll clean up the mess a little later and that's what we want so what we're going to do is we're going to find the problem. That little line must not go to the runway. It must go to that point over there. And this is our problem. So what we do is we click on the little I so we don't see it. There you go. It's taken it away. So it's linked those two. And there you can see we've got a proper um, a, um, arrival now. On the approach, that one. Ah, it doesn't give us an approach now. It seems it's using everything from the top there. All right, so that means the rest comes from um, the side of things. All right, we're going to use. Uh, that's our arrival that is the actual transition and um, I think that would include the approach because the moment I click there it brings up that so I think those two are tied together um, all right so what some brief suggested was flight level 2300 and we're going to use the Ryanair aircraft that's our flight number call sign what I'm going to do quickly is I'm just going to copy the plan from the top and I'm going to go and just put it into this one into Navigraph right so there you can see we've got our uh, departure there's a break there which we're just going to fill in we're just going to take the discontinuity away um, in the zebra when we get there and then we just need to fix this one up again and I recall from yesterday uh, playing around with this, we want ILSX on, on runway 03 from ITAS. Nope, it wasn't. Let's quickly run through then. It's actually an easy way of finding out. Let's click there. Click there. There's ITAS. So then I must just not use runway 3 because that's the problem. So we want that one. There you go. So now it looks exactly the same here, apart from that little uh, link. Um, I have not been able to find a way to get rid of that link um, inside of Navigraph because that is obviously part of this arrival. So it actually takes you to that NDB right in front of the airport so again we'll have to edit that out when we get into the zebra but at least the rest is now looking exactly the way it should so i'm happy with this Let's see what it looks like are oh, we getting nice bright sunlight already okay let's bring that back come on we why aren't you letting me do this? Oh, there we go. All right, so um, the only thing left here to do is going to be to export. So we're going to export the Explain 11 FMS output plans. Um, I already had one there, so we're just going to overwrite it. Um, which means that we can use the company route in the Zebo as well. All right, so there I've just saved all my normal little charts as always. And we can say fly now. All right. So on this page, uh, this is our flight summary. Um, it's going to start off obviously by showing us 
uh, the relevant flight uh, information there, the planning that was done. It's also going to give us uh, our fuel planning that we need. Uh, it's obviously on the AFB as well. And then at EGSS we've got our elevation. So where's that spreadsheet of mine? Let's just uh, drag that closer. All right, there it's got the transition altitude of 6,000 feet. Um, which is something we can also put in my spreadsheet. That's fine. All right, then we've got a runway heading. That's very important for us to know. So it's 223. And this also works out your runway slope for you. The minus mean it's downhill. So we're going to go uh, D0.2. Uh, you mean over here, Tony? Um, yeah, I, I haven't checked that out. I actually thought this was like a picture. I didn't even, it didn't cross my mind to actually even type there. Thank you for that. I know there's a scratch pad here where you can type in. I didn't know you can actually type here. So let's do this. D0.2. Very nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I know it gets saved. There's a bit of a problem in version 14 on the save. Dan said he'll fix it, but um, it is there. Yeah, fantastic. Um, all right, so we've got almost everything that we need. What else do we need? We also need... Um, uh, this is for, for the arrival site. We might as well make our... Um, notes here for that as well so we said that the ISA dev runway 2 to 1 is going to be minus 11 it might change by 1 or 2 degrees not the end of the world all right so we've got that let's just make it stand out a little bit All right, our runway heading on the other side is going to be 214. So I'm just making a note of that. Runway slope is irrelevant. And then the landing performance and stuff we're going to get from Topcat. All right, so it tells us our ETE over there. And this is just the normal Lido format. Um, as far as I know, you can change your, your format to which OFB layout you want. But I obviously use the Lido. So there you go. Alright, I just want to quickly make sure we've got the correct flight level to 30. Alright, so that's all fine. And we can actually move this out of the way and start setting up the aircraft. Now I've got some Rhine Air liveries going on there as well. Do we actually have a GPA? Yeah, so we don't need to use our one. I've started to get into the habit of not uh, calling for this GPU when I see there is one at the gate already. So, we to push back. Make 
make sure we get a, a fresh push over there. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. All right, so according to the OFB, we need 16.4 in the payload. And on the fuel side, 4.7. Again, okay, let me fix it. Sorry, guys. Here you go. Oh, That's annoying. It. It's terrible. It is so terrible. I, I think at some point in time, I'm literally um going to have to uninstall and reinstall this thing and hopefully that fixes it because i seem to be the only one blessed with this curse today uh, well for the last couple of weeks since the last update that it, it just loses the freaking explain uh the scaling there joseph um i actually have uh keyboard shortcuts so i have pre-configured in explain 11 uh doors one uh, through six on control one control two control three four five and six so i just use keyboard shortcuts to open the doors um, it, for me i don't know maybe i'm just lazy but for me to go here and then start clicking it's just too much work <laughs> i just thought it would be easier to have keyboard shortcuts which is then how i do it Right, so let me start my Ryanair little program so it tracks my flight. There you go, that's started so we can get that chrono going. Thank you, Dimitri. Yeah, I, I'm glad I went back to X-Vision. It really makes a big difference. That makes two of us. Yeah, I know, Uncle John. It was killing you. Okay, guys, um, thank you to Alex that pointed this out. For the longest time, I know that Zebo didn't allow this. All right, you had to put origin and destination first and then company route. But during the week while I was streaming on... Which Alex um, came around and he said, you know what, you can actually just type your company read. I've tested it, it works. So if you guys have been following me um, on YouTube a lot, you'll see in all the videos, I always do that, origin first, then destination, then company route. Because there was a limitation in the Z, but at some point in time now, he obviously never sent me a note on that. I don't expect that. It's just something I was supposed to pick up. But you know, this is how habit works. I just continued my habit. And now Alex have shown me, if I actually go E, G, S, S, and E, H, E, H, and I just put the company read in, it actually populates it for me. So I'm kind of very pleased with that. That's absolutely a, a good spot there. Uh, right, and then we are high in air what's this call sign 971 one activate execute right that is cool and let's look at our arrival that looks perfect then now this is where the fun is gonna come in we need to make sure that it actually translated that flight plan correctly into the Boeing so step through this Roll down. right Go out a little bit 
right then there's the discontinuity we're going to go get that one and paste it in there go edit so that line that comes through there that is your line coming i presume from eindhoven that's when you do your missed approach that's the line coming from there we'll have a look when we get there but don't be alarmed of that it's it's such a short flight it's very possible you can still see that line all right let's step through further and if it's not we're obviously going to kill it but anyway let's zoom in now Right, from Iptas we want to go there, right, so EHN needs to come out, remember when we looked at the actual um, plan, we had that line that was coming from Iptas straight somewhere there, and we had to get rid of it, now this is exactly what we're going to do here, we need to get rid of that Echo Hotel November NDP so we don't want that and if we step through what is that one called Kilov right, so we're going to take Kilov and we're going to go step back a little bit and put it in there and execute that one All right, there it's also taken that other line away for us. All right, so let's step again. Zoom in a little bit more. Hello, Flavio, and yeah, Happy New Year. Um, nice to see you on stream again. Good to have you. We're all good this side. Um, today's flight plan is a little bit more advanced, a little bit more work that needs to be done so I hope um, I'm going to do it justice. I think when we're going to get to that area over there we might consider actually just vectoring ourselves just a little bit wider to come in. That's a hell of a uh, bad angle that. So we'll get there, we'll, we'll see what it looks like. Um, on the map it's not as tight really it looks better but we interrupt this program. Matthias, thank you for the subscription. We, we're going to figure it out when we get there. Um, I'll probably just go a little bit wider. We'll see. We'll have a look, see when we get there. We'll think on our feet if we can say that. All right, so let's step through more. Right, and then we've got the little blue uh, go around there, so that's fine. Okay. Um... Right, let's go to our preferences. I presume the fuel is loaded. <laughs> yeah, that's why I muted the mic quickly. Sorry, guys. <laughs> my wife comes up here. She's made me some pancakes. And she was talking to my son, so I just quickly muted the mic. Oh, it looks lovely. I'll start eating when we get in the air. Let's quickly do this. I'm hungry now. <laughs> this looks so good. Anyway, okay. Right, so there we have 4.7. Right, that's correct. Um, I'm just going to quickly bring this onto the screen for you guys just to recap. So we've got 4.7. Um, this does not have that special line that I have in my PFPX configuration that I built in there. So I have to basically just add those two values, 1374 and 1032. So I, I'm just going to round it off and let's just say 1.4 uh, for our um, reserves. the reserves and cost index will be 6 for Ryanair and we've got 1.9 on the planned fuel and we said flight level 230 
Alright, then obviously I just read the rest at the top right hand side, so 277 at 45 and then got the F positive 3. Execute. Alright, 97.8, I'm going to just derate that a little bit. We don't need more than that, it's nice and cold that and then we can go to take off flaps 5 CG and trim and then we go to page 2 now this is the nice thank you Joseph much appreciated my friend let's go to the overhead and just look at the wind and see the wrong way. I just have to wait. Did then at eleven. Alright, so coming back to the toolkit, if we look at the toolkit, we now have the runway uh, wrong one. We have the runway heading and then we also have the other thing we wanted to do the slope we already have the slope all right so we can put in there runways then downhill 0 0.2 and the runway heading 3 It's my pleasure, Joseph, and it's it's awesome to have somebody like you in my life to actually um, support me as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me change that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sorry. Apologies. All right. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, John. Um, all right, I'm going to use a cutback because of all the aunties just waking up now. You know, curlers in the air. You know, groggy need some coffee before they wake up kind of a thing so we're just gonna do a bit of a cutback I uh, see the cutback's gonna take us down to 81.9 on the N1 that's gonna be nice okay so nice and slow climb between 1000 and 3000 and then we can go and select our V speeds right and then coming back here come on show it all right uh, what we can do just because we can is we can look at the meter just by clicking on the meter there and we can quickly go and pick up our Q and H that's one way of doing it the other way of doing it is obviously just playing with Echo, Golf, Sierra, Sierra, Airport Information, Mike, Zero, A, Two, Zero, Zulu, Weather, Wind, Two, One, Zero, At, One, Five, Visibility, One, Zero, Thousand, Sky Condition, Ceiling, Two, Thousand, One, Hundred, Overcast, Temperature, Nine, Two Point, Six, Q and H, One, Zero, Two, Four, Advise on Initial Contact, You Have Information, Mike, Awesome. So we have options and um, again what makes this toolkit so wonderful for me is everything is right at your fingertips. You just need to know where to click. You know, there it's got all your frequencies, there it's got your TAF for the guys and how to read that as well. Um, everything is there. Now if we can add those other three values that I mentioned earlier in these two blocks, then I can get rid of my extra spreadsheets and all the other uh, calculators that I have to use, you know, so it's all good, all working out very nicely. Alright, we're on 11 minutes, so we need to burn a little bit more time. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, welcome aboard our flight today. We're wrapping up the final paperwork here, should get you on your way momentarily. I want to thank you so much for your company and business. We invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Again, welcome aboard.
I love your ass. Vertical speed. Adjust. Climb. Climb now. Climb. Climb now. Climb. Crossing. Climb. Climb. Crossing. Climb. 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 Clear of conflict. Descend. 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 Crossing. Descend. Descend. Crossing. Descend. Descend. Descend now. Descend. Descend now. Increase. Climb. Increase. Climb. Increase descent. Increase descent. Maintain vertical speed. Maintain. Maintain vertical speed. Crossing. Maintain. Monitor vertical speed. TCAS test. Pass. Okay, sorry, I didn't want to speak while that guy was doing his little uh, story there. Uh, Elias, I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm enjoying Ryanair. I'm fortunate to have. Um, real Ryanair guys, pilots as well as uh, operational guys and ground crew guys here with us now. Uh, not as we speak, but um, as part of the group. Um, so it's going from strength to strength on this side. You know, the more the guys know about Zebo and uh, what I do and what the rest of the guys do and so on, the, um, the following grows, you know, so everything good. Um, we had a, an excellent conversation with one of the operation guys um, yesterday and uh, he was on discord here with us you know so it, it gives you a totally different perspective uh, you know of sim versus real world and things so all good man all good how are you doing um dimitri also sorry uh good morning good morning joe I, i've just dragged you in there let me just greet you first thank you thank you for uh, letting me in everything is well and uh i, I can't wait to see this flight fantastic fantastic all right so dimitri to answer your question um this is the first flight i'm doing in 42 um i have as usual not picked up anything uh uncle john i'll start the apu just now um i'm just waiting for about 16 minutes another 30 seconds don't want to burn too much um so i don't have any problems as yet um as usual i've read some of the comments and i reserve the right to remain silent because I don't know we, we'll see if it works for me it should work for everybody else I don't know what people do on on these systems good morning Kevin welcome to the stream right so uh, while we burning time there we almost at that 16 minute mark I want to show you guys a little bit more of the sim toolkit thing um, hold on John hold on hold on let's get this we'll, we'll get there Uncle John Right, so in terms of the something else that this app gives us, so I can now zoom out. If you look at the little bit of traffic around us, that's VATSIM traffic, right? So I can actually switch on and switch off VATSIM traffic. I can switch on and switch off the ATC. Let's see if we've got ATC. Yeah, there you've got it. VATSIM traffic in green. So there they are off. There I can switch them on. Then I've got the IVEO ATC. They are in red. And that's all, all our VAYO ones. I can also enable the... Why is it not keeping it? There we go. There's the Nico, we're not track. seeing that at all, just so you know. You should. Give it 10 seconds. Let's see. Okay, there it is. Thank you. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, Joe, remember there's a... A little bit of a delay between me and the stream when you are on discord uh, you're gonna have to count it 10 or something before it actually shows yeah so anyway okay now that it is there um, the red aircraft those are all Iveo guys the green ones they are all Vatsim guys um, if I click on show me I'm the orange one right there where the mouse is now and then also I can have the uh, Sim Toolkit Pro uh, guys in a different kind of blue. And then also we can have Pilot Edge. So just to make it interesting, and it's obviously going to take time to render now because there's a hell of a lot of pilots flying all over the place now. 
Um, Elias, this is free, yes, my friend. Portions of it needs to be integrated with Navigraph, which is obviously not free. Um, but the bulk of the program is free, yes. And the link to download it is below the video, guys, if you want it. But look there, there's Pilot Edge, guys. So we've got all the networks, including the Sim Toolkit Pro, guys, all now on one map. And apologies, it does take a minute or so, as well, a second or two, to just render. And then you can obviously switch off which ones you don't want to see we are not flying online so i don't pretty much care so it's those are the sim toolkit plus guys that's currently left with me and um, you know there you can also see we've got weather enabled so you can see when you're flying into terrible weather um, then the other thing that this little program gives us is it's a phenomenal help when it comes to taxiing around so there you go you must just zoom to the um, correct level it actually will give you stand numbers as well and then obviously the taxi routes and what you can also do is you can now click at the top there and then you can start building your taxi route so what we're gonna do is there's just no way to click okay so it's gonna click there it's gonna click there and there so now i can say finish and now according to whatever um you know the atc gave me in terms of a taxi instruction i can actually put there and this program obviously it's going to show you and uh, you're going to taxi just like a normal gps on the ground just to where you need to go so another great addition to the program Yeah, I don't know who's flying West Coast. It might be guys from Europe flying there, but wh whatever it is, Dimitri, the guys are obviously enjoying themselves. So, All right, we on 20 minutes. Let's get this APU going. Do the overhead while we are now. Busy thinking about it. Let's get you guys on and we can now close our doors. So Joe, I'm gonna press control one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you'll see the lights go out there at the top. They are all extinguished, so I know all the doors are closed. Right, then we can send our many men away. Hello Sentinel, Ground good morning. To is driving up. Yeah, I'm closing everything and sending the guys away, Albapina. Um because I'm basically ready to get going now. I don't want to waste too much time more. <laughs> Alex, who knows? Um, typical British weather, if you ask me. It's a weird one, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. All right, so it's not cold enough for actual de-icing. Uh, we are below 10 degrees, so we're just going to keep to the norms.
Transfer connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Okay, John. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. I'm using the 2K, yes, because I've only got a 4 gig uh, VRAM VGA card. And the 4, 4K is nice. It's really nice. But it gives me uh, VRAM issues because it uses so much more VRAM. So. Um, unfortunately when I stream specifically I use the 2k one of these days that'll be gone when I get the new VGA card but for now I'm kind of stuck so is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed hand signal on the left We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Uh, Dimitri that depends on your system I would I would definitely try it if you get stutters and you get kind of a problem with your display then go back but I would definitely give the 4k a try right so um, according to the FCOM if you are on the ground below uh, 10 degrees be between 1 and 10 degrees we need to have our anti-ice on we borderline but we're going to honor that and also you need to taxi with flaps up because there is the possibility of icing right now so um, we're going to honor that that's why I started uh, well I mistakenly put the flaps out and then I immediately retracted them again just to explain why I did that All right, and there we go. Let's rock and roll. Yeah.
the cabin is secured. Have a good flight. I'm just gonna quickly park here. Just wanna bring that map back up just to show you guys what I have on my second screen. So there you can see I'm just following the line. Uh, the alignment isn't perfect, but it's not something to split the ears about. And we're just obviously going to taxi to that point. Now, going back to the map, if you enable your VATSIM and IVEO traffic or whatever other traffic you want to enable, you can obviously see if there's somebody on approach or you can see where the guys are located. So you don't have to worry about spawning on top of somebody again and you don't have to worry about somebody approaching if they are or not because, uh, you know, it's nice to check from the SIM, which is a good thing to do. That's more real. But now on the map, it just makes it so much easier. Right, I think I'm ready. Let's go. Approaching two, two. Everything's on, Uncle John. Thank you. Hey, no worries. Thank you for checking up on, on me. Appreciate that. Two, two. Flaps, flaps. Guess what we missed? Tell me. Flaps. Of course, of course. <laughs> and she warned you anyway. Yeah, she did. Uh, if she didn't, I would have heard the uh, nye, nye, nye. So I make sure it sticks. All right, green light. Green light, let's go. Well, Dimitri, if you can get the call sign of the guy, you can find him, you know, you don't need this map for that, but you can find them. Um, if you're using Swift, you can mute them out. There's a couple of measures now that's actually in place that you can use. So, um, and then you just wallop them, you know, at some point in time, the guys are going to have to catch on from management side and supervisor side that they really seriously need to kick these people, you know, there's no point in having trolls. And until they get serious, the guys upstairs get serious about that, and yeah, nothing's going to change, unfortunately. So there's the map again, you can see we are on our way. Well, the weather report was spot on. Yeah. Clouds was at 2.4 on. Yeah. Hello, Krister. Yeah, always, Krister, that's exactly what I said, just wallop them.
Right, okay, one thing that you might or might not know is during the takeoff run the wing anti-ice will trip. So we've got the engine anti-ice on. From now on we use this in 30 second intervals only when we need to. We're not going to use it if we don't have to. If you leave it on you're going to kill yourself because what happens is the ice actually builds up in uh, the little openings uh, in between uh, you know the wrong places and then that wing anti-ice becomes absolutely ineffective so we're going to keep our eye on possible icing and then use it as necessary now currently our air temperature is above 10 which means that the icing is very unlikely anyway so we're just going to keep it like that It's too close for comfort, so I'm just going to leave it and be kind of in out clouds anyway. So. Omar. Omar, you're gonna have to check your controls, my friend. Something, you, either you're putting out asymmetrical thrust or there's something with your controllers or your rudders or something. Um, what you need to do is use Toga properly. And Toga is mic, not N1. Don't press N1 and think you're getting Toga. It's not it. So use your Toga properly, set it up. If those two little engines are in sync, it can then only be the controllers. That's not uh, properly calibrated to in sync or something. And good morning, Paul. I dragged you in here and then I got so busy. Sorry uh, for a late good morning, but welcome. Morning, Nico. Morning, everybody. Morning, Paul. Morning, Paul. Yo, Dimitri, you must look in my um, private hangar. Um, the active sky settings that we've determined to be the better ones for the Zebo, it's all listed there. Uh, you can't have icing at 100%, it's not realistic. Eh? I, I agree, Krister. I've got my Toga button on my joystick, uh, well, on the throttle quadrant, basically. So just press that and it goes. But the mic works, the mic is all good. Looks like the cutback's just finished and you're now climbing strongly again. Yes, and then there's like a step climb in the axle flight path. Um, there's limits. Uh, if you go to your legs page, you would see that. Uh, you know, and then you can actually uh, also see that it climbs, stops, climbs, stops a couple of times. Omar, depending on how you want to simulate, if you're just a simulator pilot, um, you don't have to do it that way. But if you want to fly according to the FCOM, this is what the FCOM tells me. I'll put it on screen there. All right, so the FCOM says that above 10 degrees, we've got normal anti-ice uh, operations. Okay, so it's off. Between 1 and 10 engine and wing anti-ice goes on. You have to taxi with flaps up. Wing anti-ice must be on during all ground operations between engine start and takeoff. And like I said, the wing anti-ice will trip itself. It will switch off um, because of the bleed air and everything that's required during takeoff. It, it won't get its supplies so it trips. Alright, so that's what the FCOM says. Uh, you can read the rest there quickly. Um, it talks about the fluid. Once we've done the anti-ice uh, type 4 fluid that Zebos put in here, we don't need to use the wing anti-ice again for a while um, until after takeoff. So um, this is the FCOM versus, you know, just normal flight simming. 
um, if you follow my checklist um, which you can also download from my private anger the link is below the video in the description um, then you will see all these little nuggets and then it's up to you to decide to what level you want to simulate are you going to go all out to simulate FCOM procedures or are you just going to flight sim and that's how you're going to determine it um, obviously uh, it would be advisable below 10 degrees especially with any precipitation clouds or water it's precipitation and you don't want to get in a situation where ice builds up just because you didn't use those three little switches you know so uh, once you go and there you see it's dropped again below 10 degrees which is a problem so I'm going to switch it back on and then what I do is I use the uh, chronograph over here to just time 30 seconds on uh, the wing because if you read further on in the checklist I think I did make a note somewhere here. let's have a look see uh, wing anti-ice there only below 35,000 feet only in 30 second intervals to remove ice on the first three slats all right do not uh, keep them on or ice will build around them this is all from the fcom and it's going to be up to you how far you want to simulate this uh, the zebo is ice sensitive um, i have personally fallen out of the sky at least once because of ice um, and that was while Orge was you know yeah watching me which was kind of embarrassing but I was ice eating ice cream at that point in time it's a whole famous story already um, so I died because I didn't think that the ice was going to be a problem and then it actually turned out that it was modeled very well and the aircraft responds very well to it so up to you correct fog is also precipitation um, any visible form of moisture fog clouds rain snow all those things that's precipitation you need to protect yourself against that and now we can see that um, temperatures falling 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 so we need to make sure and I'm talking so much I clean forgot about the wing and the ice we don't want the wing and the ice on for that long we said 30 seconds and no, that was already three times that so Christopher, that's awesome yeah absolutely I'm going to change the checklist at some point in time there, there's one procedure and and this again highlights the differences between the FAA certified pilots and the ICAO pilots flying in Europe versus flying in America or even flying in South Africa everybody's got a different way of doing things and I'm not going to make it too difficult the, the, the point is not to take away the fun out of um, our flight swimming experience but I ran into a situation during the week again where a British slash South African pilot said to me I'm starting my engines incorrectly all right and it's not that it's done incorrectly the procedure you just saw me do is recognized it is how the guys in America taught me how to do it but in the rest of the world there's a different way of doing it so the question is who's right who's wrong what are we going to do how do you defend yourself against the checklist telling you to do it one way and then a pilot says do you do it another way and it's actually very easy um, in a situation like that what i'm going to do is i'm going to follow um, the fcom because then the two pilots the real pilots can go and argue with each other i don't want to hear about it because I, all i'm going to do is lift up the fcom and say this is what boeing says all right and um, the the one interesting thing that Boeing actually um, asks you to do is to close your isolation valve and to switch the right back on after engine 2 has started and the reason they do that is because that way you can push air through to the passengers and relieve their discomfort all right which in my procedure currently in the checklist and the way I do it doesn't do that it relies on me just starting the engines soon enough and you know you expect the guys will be able to survive the one minute that it takes to start the two engines you know so that's a, that was what the discussion was about in the week the, the one guy says do it this way the other guy says do it that way and then the FCOM says do it a different way so um, I'll get there Uncle John uh, still talking too much I know too much but uh, you know just want to explain myself 
So yeah, that's in in an instance like this, we'll we'll change it, make it FCOM, and then nobody can argue with me. They can go argue with each other. You know what I'm saying? All right, we've obviously now left the clouds. The um, visual uh, moisture is not really close. It's not going to be a problem for us, so we can actually switch off the ATIs. Yeah, yeah, procedures. Yes, sir. Ah, <laughs> Sentinel, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, I've even remembered to let the poor packs go to the loo now, so they can go do what they need to do. Guys, while the aircraft is climbing, I need three minutes or five minutes max to just quickly eat my pancakes. I am here, so please feel free to talk and do what you need to do, and I will respond as soon as I can. Bells we go.
become very quiet. Well, I'm back, so now the talking is going to start now again, Uncle John. Um, I see there on stream uh, questions and stuff. Uh, Krista has answered some, some of it. Vikram, um, no, my real world flying experience um, ended with a Cessna T10 um, many, many years ago. I'm keeping the dream alive by just educating myself. Um, helping where I can with this whole Zebo project and then obviously giving you guys some instruction you know as um, I pick up things I like to give back to the community I've, I've flown all my life I've been in and out of real world aviation in various forms but I'm not a real 737 driver that I am not um, my friends are my mentors are and that is where I pick up most of my stuff and otherwise I just study a lot and fly a lot. How were the pancakes? Oh, it was magnificent. And the iced tea that um, I had as well, that was just super. So let me quickly set up uh, the course values and things now. 214. 214. We have our radios. Uh, what are we looking at? 109.75. Right, let's go look at these values so at HSD will be three tons landing us 300 kilograms so that's 60 6 30 on the flaps uh, forecast was flight level zero or zero that ISA, where did I put that? Uh, minus 11 and let's listen do the Q&A screen Echo, hotel, Echo, hotel, airport information Quebec 0825 Zulu, weather Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 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 Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, T
thousand and we've got fifteen thousand and then we've got ten thousand yeah two nine two thirty nine were you intending to show us the operational flight plan for these altitudes and winds? Um, yes, I was. Are you not seeing it? No. Negative. Thank you so much for telling me. Sorry, guys. There you go. All right, you should see. It. Tell me when you see it. There it is. All right. Sorry about that. Um, five at thirty. What would I do without you, Paul? Have fewer headaches, probably. Negative. No, I would have felt like an idiot if I looked up and I saw it's not there. So, right, and then that's 249. And then we can just execute it. So, how nice is that? I mean, there's your web FMC, there's all the information you need, you just have it all there one time with each other yeah that's fabulous Paul's awake <laughs> yeah. well your attention was somewhere else mine was completely in doing the job not watching the screen I do apologize sorry Right, what is the length of that runway? That's the other question. Okay, we're going to take the back one then. Hey, Brett. Awesome, well, welcome. And uh, I'm broadcasting all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa, so uh, you are most welcome, and I, I hope you enjoy this some toolkit thing um, this wasn't much of a tutorial like I said in the beginning I just wanted to show you guys the capabilities you know um, there are a few things that I'm waiting for that needs to change and be added in the kit and then I'll start thinking about doing a proper um, tutorial on it kind of a thing um, there is another tutorial or introduction that flying medic did for us um, if you guys are interested, I can share that link with you. I, I really um, would encourage you to actually watch it. I'm, I don't have it right now. I must go find it. Um, if you're interested, I can share that with you. Because um, that also just gives you an overview. Um, the Sim Toolkit thing is on under constant updates, basically. Um, I've spoken to the developer. What a nice guy. Um, He's, he's really been good to me and stuff that I've wanted to put in there is done and he's still doing so I'm very very pleased with what's happening here and um, this will definitely be my tool of choice for uh, ordinary flight planning you know if if there is a reason to go back to PFPX it's got to be a good reason um, you know and then I'll do that but other other than that um, the next step for me would be to tweak to fine tune the SimBrief um, profile for the Zebo because uh, SimBrief has now allowed extra tweak tools, so to speak, um, so I can make it more in line with PFPX and the actual Zebo performance. But that will come in time. I'm, I'm not going to break myself doing it now. It's it's good enough for what it is. It's good enough to do the flight and to have your reserves and things. So we just accept it as is right now and then. We'll develop it further later <coughs> but this right. is an amazing piece of software sorry uncle john i was just about to say a, a big welcome to brett and of course we we all send our condolences with the problems that you've got out oh with the fires yes 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 yeah, so But I've um, just discovered here yeah, that the approach has got the two phases to it. So this is your initial approach and then you've also got a final approach chart. Guys, you need to um, make sure when you do your planning that you get all of them. I 
absolutely missed um, this one but anyway it's there uh, so this is where I picked up my other information and it just makes it so easy having everything just here click on a tab all in one little program when we are done I'll show you the aftermath because obviously there's a logbook um, there are quite a few nifty little things here that I think some of you will really appreciate um, while we're waiting I can show you some of you know that's the OFB there's your charts you've got a scratch pad I never knew you could actually type in here thank you Tony for telling me that that's gonna make a, a big difference all right and then <coughs> we've got the root waypoints um, where is that thing? this is the logbook I'm not going to show you the last one because there is a problem with the program and uh, the developer said he'll fix it but look at this if you go back to your logs all the information that is stored yet even keeps a copy of your OFP for you it's got the flight map um, and then some other stuff uh, so you go to the full report I'll keep it brief but basically you've got a replay function and you can actually watch the animation and it will show you how you flew how's that there's all the live data that's brilliant yeah that's amazing so let's get back to our live map we can see where we are at Absolutely. Yeah, I've actually got it on my um, Android tablet here next to me as well. But in all honesty, um, I prefer having it because I've got four screens available to me. I prefer having it on screen here instead of now sitting with a second device. It was good. It was. It's wonderful to have it there. But for me personally, I, I like having multiple screens. Everything on one screen. Right now we are coming up to that nasty turn over there, and I'm a f I'm gonna be a sucker. I I'm gonna try and fly it, but let's see. Let's go a little bit closer. I don't think we're gonna be very successful. I think we're going to literally throw away our good name. If I think that. anything more than 90 degrees is too much. Yeah, that's way <laughs> way over 90. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until we hit that uh, waypoint and then I'm just going to vector myself away um, make that turn better because that's just crazy that's a crazy turn see in the real world you will obviously have air traffic controllers and I can bet you my bottom dollar they'll give you vectors they're not going to expect you to, to do that unless you're a very small aircraft flying very slow you know it's just not going to happen it would give major problems for the capture yeah, we'll be going, well, going mad. Definitely. Yeah, I was doing some calculations um, last night about how much you overshoot waypoints. Um, and even as slow as 180 knots, you're going to overshoot by at least a mile, yeah, maybe two miles, depending on your airspeed. I prefer something around about the 45 degree or less. Yeah, 30 is a much better uh, option even still, you know, so. We'll just wait until we hit that waypoint then I'll turn away a little bit. Santinel was asking about when you hit the approach button. It, do the diamonds have to be solid majestic before you do that, or no. is it as soon as you see them? Um, no, <laughs> as soon as you see them could be too early, because that can still be 30 miles out. So what I would suggest is to enable the approach button um, just before uh, the localizer would come alive. There's a couple of reasons for it. For some reason in X-Plane. Um, I have not spoken to Zebo personally about it, but I've spoken to other guys now. Um, the, the 
identification of the ILS is sometimes not always sometimes a problem and what happens is you sometimes get the downwind ILS so when the guys hit the approach button this aircraft turns 180 degrees the opposite direction all right so first of all you need to make sure that that identifier is correct that you are actually looking at the correct ILS with the correct course and everything that's the first thing you need to do second thing and now I'm talking too much again I'm getting select the other thing that you need to do I'll turn it to Nico yes Uncle John thank you Uncle John done Uncle John <laughs> Sorry, we're talking to you. We're talking to you a little too much here, I think. Uh, yeah, but Uncle John's doing his job, so I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. All right, let me also use some speed brakes because the speed's running away from us now. All right, so what I would do is I would wait until I'm fairly close to that leader line there on that um, uh, airport uh, for that runway, you know, uh, uh, before I would even switch it on. If you do it too early there's no point kind of and you what you will get like for instance at Porto if you enable it too quickly it actually leaves the magenta line to chase the localizer so you've got to just come close enough that you see you're not gonna get an issue and then enable it in the real world what will happen is the, the air traffic controller will uh, clear you to intercept the localizer in that regards you will use VOR lock if he clears you to intercept the ILS, which is a different thing, it means the whole package, then you hit the approach button. So those are two clues in the real world as well. If, if you clear it for the localizer, hit VOR lock. If you clear it for the ILS, you hit approach. And um, again, it's going to determine on exactly where you are in go. the flight phase. Oh, those are excellent tips. Thank you. Yeah. As always. I'm glad I switched my authors on this morning. Me too. As I went on to the outside, I actually pressed my trim. That's why the, the pilot went off. All right. I'm going to start turning back now, so let's turn. Crew being warned for landing. Mm -hmm. I have now. Okay, so as you guys can see, we're getting closer and closer and closer. We know we're on the right ILS. And what will happen is uh, when we get to that line, obviously that will go solid. But there's no point in waiting that long. So what we're going to do is just make it a little bit more shallow. Like that. 
and I've got two choices I can either go VOR lock or approach I'm gonna go full approach because there's no ATC I've just cleared myself basically imaginary and then we're going to let the aircraft then just continue on its path it will intercept the thing and go to its magic what I can do as I get closer is I can just maybe turn the knob a little bit more making that intercept angle a little bit more shallow easier on the aircraft to intercept properly and we've got no IVAO on That's approach. No, no, no. We've got no. I, I wanted to fly an IVAO and then I stopped that. No, no, no. Not for this. I'll do it again. Tonight we're going to do a big flight. The tension is building, guys. There you go, there the localizer is alive, runway's moving in. And the zipo will pick up on it just now. There we go. Right, there's the runway coming up. Right, so what I'm going to do is just pass this waypoint and we will go uh, gear down flaps 15 and run through the normal checks. Right, lights, seat belts, auto brake and speed brake all in the right place. Flaps 15, set. It's quite a headwind, isn't it? Yeah, 20 knots. Uh, Bob, yes, yeah, it's open here on my third screen. So it's just open the whole time because uh, obviously it contains relevant information and stuff that um, you know I look at. So I'm looking at my path and I'm looking at well, I used to and I did when I went you know to do the planning. I looked at all of this. So there's merit in having it open and then. Um, obviously once we land we're going to zoom in to actually see the taxiway situation again what green box on what main display you mean yeah the bottom there of your primary flight display over there That is a moving runway. That is actually your runway. Yeah, yeah. That that is your um, runway. It's a moving runway, basically part of the map now. Yeah, 
that's just your runway. It's a synthetic display, basically, of your runway. It, it just shows you where your runway is at. If you zoom in, <coughs> you'll see it's got the center line as well. So, I mean, that is your localizer, that is your center line, and that is your actual runway. And it moves with the display now. We hit down to nine knots on the headwind now, Paul. That's good. That was a bit much earlier. Approaching two, got my board out. Oh, you again. Okay, no, Inspector. <laughs> I've got the bottle of whiskey here, don't worry, I'll, I'll bribe you. You ought to know that's a no-no. <laughs> Oh, come on, don't delete the fresh scenery now. Minimums. Point five. Oh, never Thank more you. than nine point five, honestly, yeah. John. Yeah. Well, listen, the highest I've ever had is nine point six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we supposed to taxi to left, right? Ah, uh, we need to go right. That's a dead end on our left hand side, but we need to actually go left, so we need to go right to, to go left. Um, Albapino, no, uh, um, at the speed I was going, I actually cut the engines probably a little bit earlier, I think maybe at 30 already. Al Papino, don't lift his uh, his his mor morale up, please. Mm, he has to. He has to. He's got a job to. Right. So I'm just quickly going to stop here again. Hey Reggie. RNP is the required navigational um, precision. Precision, probably. Yeah, uh, it, the the word left my mind for a second. And the ANP is the actual navigational. It's a profile. So it's the required navigational profile and the actual navigational profile. So the R required is the minimum standard that you have to be able to fly to to do the approach. The A is what the aircraft is actually doing. And the Zebo is capable of flying down to RNP 0.1. I think I've taken it down to. I know I know when you fly in Peru in the mountains, those RNP approaches there are hectic. And and if you go watch my videos there, you'll see I think I took it down to 0 0.1 or something. It's it's very, very finely tuned. This VNAV in this aircraft is like spot on if you fly it properly. And that's just what the two things do. Thank you, Albapina. 
All right, what did I not do? I did not switch off the weather. We don't care. I did not switch off the rain. Now we get it's done. Um, all those things are done. Taxi lights are on. Oh, start AP. Why did you go press the wrong side? Right, okay, and then. How are we gonna zoom in a little bit? So what we need to do is we need to well, I suppose we can take that taxiway if it exists, otherwise we're gonna take that one. No, we're not. We're gonna continue. That's Quago. So we're gonna go all the way to the end or there at least. And then stop somewhere there. Very nice. Uh, add the taxi route, why not? So Something like that. Finish. Well, I, I hope you guys liked that. Um, I've got one more thing I want to show you uh, in some Toolkit Pro, which is something that only works with a Zebo. And basically, you can set up a scenario at any airport, like on approach, and you put in all the information that you want, speed, height, those kind of things, and then you tell it to go fly. It will then take the Zebo, put it in that position. It will not program the FMC for you or any advanced things. It just literally puts the aircraft in that position and then you can basically practice ILS, your approach, all these kind of things you can do. Um, you know, if you take it far out enough, you can obviously program the FMC. Uh, there are certain terms and conditions to it, but basically uh, it's the only product that I know that does this and it comes with your SIM toolkit pro. So I just want to quickly have a look there. That's got to be one of the best features of the whole thing. Yeah. When you've got when you're practicing tricky approaches and whatnot. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, absolutely, Paul. Absolutely. Um, when we used to do the um, what did they call it? The career days for Mango Airlines. That would have been an awesome feature to have because um, you can't do it with the PMDG and you can't do it or you couldn't do it with a Zebo. So we were forced to do it with FSX and the native little default aircraft because you can save your scenario on short finals and then the guys can try and land it and all. I would love to go back and do that project again with this feature. Um, Sentinel I have uh, times two. I have the scenery and I have tried it very successfully. Um, it is on the bucket list. I want to actually make that a Zebo group flight and take 10 or 20 guys in there with me and see how many guys actually can land there and who will survive <laughs> and who not. It is uh. part of the plan but it just has not come to fruition yet. We did it a couple of years ago with the PMDGs when we uh, did a VATSIM group flight here in South Africa. And from about 16 guys, I think four of us landed. The rest all ended up splattered, you know, on the mountainside there. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great challenge. Okay, I want to see this deck so it looks good enough for us. Right, and I just want to quickly uh, park, file my flight plan with Ryanair so that I don't lose this flight. 
and I'll show you that feature just quickly. I'm not going to do an actual flight with it. I just want to show you where you can find it. And then you guys one. can go and fiddle with it and play with it. And then I just want to do a replay or two and we'll call it quits for the stream. And then this evening, I'm actually not sure what time it is. So just look out for the reminder on my channel. We're going to do a group flight, the Zebra Pilot group flight. And you guys are most welcome to join us even if you are not you know involved with Zebo if you want to come and fly your BMDG or whatever it, we won't know um, just don't tell us you know and then come fly with us come chat on discord come meet everybody that you always only hear about uh, or hear their voices and uh, let's have some fun tonight and then I'll stream that if possible and uh, then we can all enjoy it here as well <laughs> Oh, you mustn't crash the bird, man. Poor aircraft. Right, brakes on. APU is on. Let's kill this and go lock that flight quickly. Done. Right, so. Bridge tool. EH, EH, this is where we are at now, we want runway 21, alright, and this is now where the fun begins, because right now, oh, and by the way, this app actually has a built-in weather engine, so you don't need to have your active sky running or your whatever weather you're using, this actually comes with a weather tool as well, so you can actually, um, you know, set up everything, a vectored approach, base approach, downwind approach, uh, there's the, uh, final length in nautical miles, indicated airspeed, altitude, um, you see there you've got gear down, spoilers where it must be, flaps where it must be, um, whether the autopilot must be on or not at that point in time, and when you're ready, after you've filled in everything, all you do is click fly the approach, it'll take your zebra and go put it in that place, and then you can actually practice a little bit, so um, this was great to see, I, I didn't know that something like this existed, and I'm very very happy with that so let's go back to our flight summary and just say complete the flight we want it to be logged and on this map all the little blue lines is now where you can see where I have flown so just as a matter of interest and um, this archived OFB will be fixed in the next release but right now it looks funny um, and again, we've got the full report and we can actually go watch a replay of the landing. There you go. Yeah, so there is your real-time data. This is all the events and then this is the actual summary. General Mayor de Reiter. very impressive yeah very very you know the only button i still miss is the one that prints the money it's the only one <laughs> <laughs> the rest is all here <laughs> all right um just to show you guys this is the weather side of things um so you can actually uh, set a whole bunch of things in there then you've got custom weather you can set and then you've got weather presets that you can also fiddle with just always remember guys you can only have one weather engine enabled at any one point in time otherwise they fight with each other and you get all kinds of funny so don't do that 
and that's about it i mean um the rest you guys can discover on your own i think this was a great overview i hope you guys liked it so nico if you're running this weather engine you'd have to disable uh the other ones yes yes uh, it's, a, it's a choice of either or um i am not going to disable my active sky in favor of this weather unless it's for demo purposes or something you know but if i do a flight i mean i paid good money for active sky and it's really good um, i'm gonna keep it you know but the option is there for somebody instead of using the NOAA plugin for instance you, let's say you just bought explain right you knew you don't have the budget whatever your scenario is instead of going and going through that old rigmarole of now loading you know whatever weather engine buying whatever way the engine you you can use this one that's what it's about Nico a quick replay on the approach just to make sure my scoring was correct Oi. let's do that Side on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give the man a chance. Honestly, John. Not yeah. at all. He's got to do as he's told. <laughs> Love you too, Uncle John. Uh, Joe, I, I'm going to come back to the weather page. I just briefly went over it. I want to show you something there on the weather page as well. Okay, great. Thank you. How's that, Uncle John? Yeah, my scoring was spot on. Martin, yes, um, Active Sky will overwrite it. What happens is Active Sky will check uh, what weather is set and it will automatically put you uh, on the custom weather. I'll show you just now. Uh, custom weather. Sorry, that's not where we want to be. In your flight configuration. When you use Active Sky, it's going to force the custom weather meter. So if you go there, you've got manually configured match real world conditions. That's your built in weather. Okay. Active Sky uses a custom weather file. So if you start Active Sky, make sure it's running. Then you start Explain. The, because the plugin in um, Explain that relates to Active Sky and Active Sky itself talk to each other, it's going to force this scenario. So if you come in here and then you select any of the others, you're breaking Active Sky. So you shouldn't do that. Just leave it as this. All right, um, let's resume our flight. Um, the same goes now, as I presume, for um, this weather uh, in, in the toolkit will be the same as with NOAA. You have to put your explain weather on manual configured because if you leave it on real world weather, it will fight with the NOAA weather plugin. It will fight with this plugin. It will fight with any other plugin because it's going to want to be the dominant weather. So you always have to disable that explain weather now um, in active sky we've got the spoken atis system i see this one has also got it you see joe um, oh, you'll see yes. in a couple of seconds so there are the frequencies that you need to tune to and this will give you uh, the nearest the departure and the destination weather in audio form so this is also built in this is something that has always just been in active sky but now um, Dan has put it in here as well so that's awesome uh, there you can put your real world weather and then the interval that it needs to download and push the weather into the sim all right you can also tell it to get your weather information from the VATSIM server that's obviously for synchronization so that you don't live in la la land and believe that you run landing on the right runway but it's actually a different one very important how many fights have we not had of 
uh, about using the real world Twitter account from Heathrow to determine an active runway when it's got no bearing on the actual simulator. So that's very important to, to, to synchronize your weather. Um, and then obviously you can stop your updates. There you go. You see the, there's different parameters. So um, anyway, Dan has put a lot of thought and effort in here. And then obviously you've got custom weather. You can go and set that. But this is real live weather. So this will replace your explain weather, your NOAA plug-in and any other weather that you um, might want to use or not. Is there documentation with this program? Yes, extensive documentation. Extensive. If you go to simtoolkitpro.co.uk, the link is in the notes below my video. If you just click on show more, you'll see the link there. Uh, everything is there. Um, he's got his own Discord server as well. And I tell you what, he is active. I don't think he sleeps. He's like Zebo, like Lubos. You know, they just work. <laughs> uh, now and then he's not there, but most of the time he's there, and you can talk to him directly. And you can, um, he's got a, a little uh, section where you can put in recommended changes or suggestions. You know, and he's very active in it. And then he's got the support section, and there's obviously a whole bunch of community guys using this already. So, um, between the documentation, which is very extensive, and the, the actual support from the man himself, you cannot go wrong. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, I I would highly recommend that my followers don't get the Noah plugin from now on. That they rather use this. You know, um, Noah was good. Now we've got something to replace it. Until I'm told not to do that, um, you know, because of a technical problem, um, I think that this will be the way to go. Instead of spending money on another weather engine, why not use this one? The only thing that I don't see in here, which I'll have to speak with Dan about, is turbulence. Uh, the Zebo is very sensitive to turbulence. You don't want unrealistic turbulence. So we'll have to see what, the, what this actually does with it. Because uh, even in active sky, we've had to reduce turbulence, we've had to reduce icing. That's another thing I'm thinking out loud now. Dan, if you're watching, just make note. I'm not sure if you're going to watch this thing, but anyway. Um, you've got to be very careful when it comes to the Zebo now. Um, Dan knows the Zebo very well, it seems. And um, I'm pretty confident he's taken those things into account. But I think in terms of a free weather supplement, and uh, uh, an alternative, this is going to be super cool and like I showed you guys earlier we've got all the presets anyway so you can fiddle with that just select it how's that that's cool huh it's due a major update as well yeah 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 no, 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 a lot of things are going to change there's a lot of stuff I, I'm super excited I can't tell you with, with some of the stuff I've seen here what's this landing reports oh, okay Oh, this is really yeah. outstanding, really. Yeah, something else is you've got built-in checklists, all right? So that's my Zebo checklist over there, all right? So the same PDF one that you've got, um, this is not available to the general public. This is something that Tony, Flying Medic, did for us. We call it a technology demonstrator, whatever, um, just to show the capabilities of what we can do. But this is my complete total checklist if I bring the other one on screen there quickly it's the same thing this, this is the PDF format and this is obviously the way it works in in this program uh, you can make your own checklist you can uh, uh, probably export and import it the way we did as well it just takes a little bit more effort but um, it's got a built-in Zebo one just a basic one built in uh, by Dan uh, you know the developer of the program uh, so you've got the facility to have this as well in the same program if you want it uh, and that's about it I mean there's not much I can show you more way checklist is a, an absolute must yeah. so your checklist is integrated in it automatically uh, no, my checklist, my personal one, the Skymatics one, is something that uh, Tony did for us to show us that it can be done and how it will look. Um, but it's only me and Uncle John and Tony who, who currently has copies of it. Um, in lieu of changes in the training and stuff that I'm about to do, that's already being done behind the scenes, 
um, when that training gets released some of it will change because I have to put FCOM stuff in there um, I'm tired of the pilots fighting with each other or with me because the Americans do it one way and the Europeans do it another way so I'm going to use the FCOM that I have, the actual Boeing FCOM to just change small little detail in the checklist like the startup procedure to push um, air through to the packs instead of just telling them to hold their breath for a minute you know those kind of small little things will change once that is done and once I'm happy I would uh, seriously consider releasing it then for general public and then you guys can all have mine you know it will become part of the community thing um, as you can see there there's defaults and then we've got the community one so it will it will be available at some point in time I presume in the future but there's still a little bit of water that needs to run underneath the bridge first Yeah, you want to get it right first, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I said in the beginning I'm busy with a spreadsheet. Uh, if I can find it, I'll show you guys. It's it's very raw. It's it's brand new. I made this like midnight last night. I'm busy working out the flows and I'm busy looking at what's necessary. The stuff in yellow is the stuff that I'm waiting for that Dan said that he will... Uh, try and put into the next update like the density altitude ISO deviation and the transition flight level whether it's the first or the second or whenever update I'm not sure I'm not putting any pressure on him I mean it's not for me to do that so it we've discussed it he said he'll look into it so once all these things are done and I've got a proper flow then I can do a video on how to really use this program you know efficiently I think after today's video you already have a very good idea of how to use it but the setting up is a bit of an issue you need to know how to set it up you need to where is this thing let me show you you need to create your own fleet so it will read all your aircraft from your flights and whether it's p3d or explain doesn't matter it reads it it then um, you know, ask you certain questions about them you need to configure this also a, a work in progress is he's got um, started on a facility where he will link your actual aircraft to a custom airframe in Simbrief. So part of it has already happened but it's not entirely correct yet. That needs to be figured out because what I wanted is when I fly the Ziba I need it to be spot on. Now obviously I've got complete um, you know, perfectionist idea about it. it it mustn't be off it must be correct and and that's why it's important that we do that link up because currently it's just using the default b737 800 profile on simbrief which isn't really you know the way the zippo works so i know there's a difference and now it's bugging me <laughs> yeah thanks guys let's not start the flight hello angel um anyway yeah so not much i can show you more than that this is this is basically the toolkit and i just felt i would like to show you guys um what it can do i hope you guys liked what you saw outstanding yeah thank you very much it's a pleasure now i want to see my landing uncle john saw his let's see Why are you not giving my bar? Um, George, no, I, th I think I understand. I, I, I get it. And thank you, Martin.
Well, that's it for me then. Guys, um, I'll do my best to stream again this evening. Otherwise, I'm at least going to try to do the flight. Come join us on Discord. Have a nice chat with us and just enjoy it with us. If you want to fly with, have a look out for us on uh, Vatsim later on, guys. Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Good night.